The producers of today's event are Susan Moss from the Labyrinth Cafe, Bob and Patty Bender, <laughs> and myself. I'm Rod MacDonald. Um, my co MC this afternoon will be Steve Greenberg, and you'll also be getting to hear from uh, some of the uh, activist uh, speakers around the community. Uh, we want to say thanks to Pete Rimmel and Brian Tobin for uh, doing the sound this afternoon. We're here to celebrate the memory of Pete and Toshi today, of course, and uh, <laughs> one of the things about uh, Pete Seeger is that many of the songs that he wrote and helped to popularize are a big part of our musical legacy in American music, not only folk music, but all our music. And, uh, and uh, along the way, they made Pete some money in their time, which is an a interesting factor. Um, true to his own beliefs, I think, uh, Pete didn't uh, buy himself a Beverly Hills mansion or a faster car. He used the money from a lot of the songs you're going to hear today to fund the Clearwater, a sailing ship. A sailing ship that uh, stands tall for a cleaner Hudson River and uh, brought a lot of great music to the towns along the way. And in fact, it's the reason that I had the privilege of getting to know Pete a little bit personally, singing with him on Clearwater concerts. Our first performer today, Alan Anapu, was the original captain of the Clearwater in 1969. He is the professional sailor who sailed it from the coast of Maine down to the Hudson River with a crew of uh, dysfunctional folk singers aboard. Uh, that included Pete and Don McLean and Lynn Chandler and uh, some other people. And uh, since uh, the last few years, Alan's been hanging out here in South Florida and uh, recently made his first CD, which is called Down on the Cove. And I thought we couldn't possibly have a more fitting way to kick off today's concert than with Alan Anapu. Please give him a big welcome, if you would. When, when they put the mast in the clear water, none of the people from Maine would go on it because it didn't have all the stays. We put up the stays. And I had to climb in the rigging and rig everything. And Pete was the only one that would go up there with me. And uh, it was great to have someone up there. Uh, sometimes I had to hang upside down to, to rig the topmast. And Pete was right there. They had pictures of it, but I think they're mostly destroyed. Once upon a time, there was some name, someone named Nancy. She was a spider who lived in a chicken coop, not far south of here, but a long time ago, possibly into the future. Nancy got an idea one day, and she went to the chickens and said, Hey, chickens, let's have a big party. You supply the food and the money. I'll supply the music. You see, Nancy knew Cockroach, who was related to Cricket. And she could make beautiful music. But as you know, cockroaches, they don't, they're not very loud. So Nancy had the idea of amplifying her sound by putting her inside of a, a broken drum. She said, cockroach, I'll take care of the money and the food. You just practice up your music and we're going to entertain the chickens. And the cockroach said, brr, brr, brr. not very loud though. So the day came, Nancy carried the drum, and Cockroach was ready. And they said, ready, Cockroach, play. And pl Cockroach said, I forgot to say that this is the most dangerous part of the whole day. I would like to ask all small children and large children to come closer because this is a dangerous song. And the chickens were dancing. They were having a wonderful time. They were saying, 
Which means, Nancy, this is a wonderful party. We love the music. We're dancing. Play more. Well, guess what? Nancy ran to the cockroach and said, Cockroach, play more now. And the cockroach said, But Nancy, I'm tired. I'd like something to eat and uh, something to drink. Nancy said, yeah, but, but, you, you, but you just gotta play. So Cockroach said, okay, I'll try. And the Cockroach went back on stage and went, <laughs> and you know something? The chickens didn't like it anymore because the music didn't, wasn't as good. They said, You've heard this. And that means, Nancy, the music isn't any good anymore. You can't dance to it and this whole party's starting to suck. Nancy ran back to the drum and said, Cockroach, you gotta play better. You gotta play more. Cockroach said, I'm really tired. I just can't do it. Nancy said, if you don't do something, we're both gonna end up being dinner for the chickens. Well, as it is slow in the telling, fast in the doing, the chickens started running for the drum. Nancy ran for the drum picked up the drum, dumped out cockroach, and the chickens jumped on the cockroach and ate them up. And that's why chickens are still eating cockroaches and it's all Nancy's fault. And my name is Matthew Schwartz. I'm the executive director of a local uh, environmental organization called the South Florida Wildlands Association. Thank you very much. So let me start out with my organization. And you see these people here holding up this map. And this is where we live. This is South Florida. So we all know that Pete Seeger had a lot to do with the Hudson River. And we have the River of Grass. And we're the people that have to take care of our environment here. Right here. That's Turkey Point. That's our nuclear plant. And you know that Pete Seeger and Tashi Seeger were very involved in 1979 leading a group of us from New York City, and that's where I'm from, out to Shoreham, Long Island. And we cut down, we stopped, we shut down that Shoreham nuclear plant after it was built. After it was built. Thank you. This is some of the work that Pete did. And we have our own Turkey Point nuclear plant right here on the shores of Biscayne Bay. They want to build two more. It's not enough. What a perfect place to put two new nuclear plants on the shore of Biscayne Bay with sea level rise and global warming. Not a good idea. When they build these things, when they build these things, what do they want to put? The, they have to get, they have to move the energy. They have a great idea for moving the electricity. They want to build two new power lines along the, sh along the eastern edge of Everglades National Park. And they want the National Park Service to turn over the eastern edge of, eastern edge of Everglades National Park to FPNL. North of the Big Cypress, this is the kinds of things we're dealing with. This is my life. Welcome to it. But anyway. North of the Big Cypress National Preserve, we all love our Florida Panthers. This is where they live, ne Big Cypress National Preserve. And the private lands north of that, FPNL has also bought 7,000 acres of property to build the la largest gas-fired power plant in the country, right there. And they're building a gas pipeline down from Alabama into South Florida to bring the gas. Finally, and there's lots of stuff I can talk about, we're finding oil wells. There's a company in Collier County. In fact, Collier County is named after this family. It's called the Colliers. And Collier Resources owns 800,000 acres of mineral rights in southwest Florida, all the way from Fort Myers to Miami. So it runs in a northwest southeast pattern. They own 800,000 acres. They're developing these mineral rights. They're leasing it out to two Texas oil companies and a company from Mississippi inside the Big Cypress National Preserve, inside the Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge, inside the Audubon Corkscrew Swamp. This is where they're putting oil wells. We're stopping them. We're fighting it. I have two, two lawsuits right now.
One of the companies said they weren't fracking. They were told not to frack. They fracked anyway. So fracking is going on in South Florida. The DEP found out about it, signed them $25,000, fined them $25,000. Bill Nelson just got involved, told the EPA to get involved, and we're slowly shutting it down. So it was a big struggle. People ask me sometimes, did you ever meet Pete? It's like, did you ever meet the number six subway train? Did you ever meet the Brooklyn Bridge? Pete was always there. He was always there, wherever, whatever it was. When we went to Washington, he was there. When we were protesting wars in front of the Army recruiting office at Times Square, he was there. He was everywhere. And I can't tell you, there's, I mean, he lived a long and happy life. He did a lot of work. But it's sad to think he's not going to be there anymore. We're going to go to these demonstrations. We're not going to hear that voice anymore. And every summer we went up to Croton Point Park to hear the Clearwater and hear that beautiful music. Um, I'm glad to see so many people here I know, a lot of people I don't know. Um, Pete taught us to be happy. That's really one of the things that he, that his message was to fight the good fight. Don't do it with anger. Don't do it with sadness. The worst thing, people ask, I've been doing this work down here for years. People say, how do you do it? I say, how could I not do it? This is the most fun I've ever had in my life doing this work. Introduce the next singer, and that is the lovely, talented, and she says she never gets in any trouble, Marie Knopfsinger. She's coming up now. Dave Mallett, I think, wrote it, but Pete Seeger made it famous, and I fell in love with this song. And it's kind of got a lot of meanings. It can mean something toward your life, but it can also mean we got to take care of the land we live on. And that's whether we have an attorney's or we don't have an attorney protecting us. You got to stand up for what's yours. Please sing along with me. I'll do the chorus first. And, uh... Inch by inch, row by row, I'm gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Think you can do that the next time around? I'm gonna make you. Pulling weeds, picking stones We're all made of dreams and bones I feel the need to grow my own Cause the time is close at hand Grain for grain, sun and rain Find my way in nature's chain Tune my body and my brain To the music of the land You ready? Loving care. There's an old crow watching hungrily from his perch in yonder tree. And in my garden, I'm as free as that feathered thief up there. All right, everybody. Inch by inch, row by row. And a hoe and a piece of fertile ground Someone bless these seeds I sow Someone warm them from below Till the rain comes tumbling inch by inch I'm gonna make this garden grow We sure are 
All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground For peak now, inch by Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. The nice thing about a lot of our performers is this isn't a one day thing for them. They are involved in their communities every day of the year working for a better South Florida and a better country. And one of those people is Lori Jennings Uden. For the last uh, few years, she's been performing with the award-winning Jennings and Keller. She is one half, I believe I the female half, right? One half of the half. Of what, she is one quarter of Jennings and Keller, even though there's only two of them. <laughs> for the last six years, and this goes to what my point was, for the last six years, she's been working with the nonprofit group Art Spring, which brings arts as therapy for incarcerated women. As Steve mentioned, I, I work with women in prison, and our last semester, where I, we do singing and songwriting, uh, our last semester ended in April, and one of the pieces that the women learned, and it was the first time that they did four-part harmony in an ensemble piece, was Wim Away. And it was, most of them had never heard of the song, and I, at least 95% of them did not know who Pete Seeger was. But they started, as they were learning their parts, they would sneak around the, the prison singing, because you're not supposed to sing in prison. But they would go off to the rec areas and in corners and, and work on their parts. And little by little, they got more and more of the other female inmates to sing with them as well. So that was, I figured Pete would really like that. <laughs> When I was a young man, I'd never been kissed Got to thinking over what I had missed I got me a girl and I kissed her and then Well, oh Lord, well I kissed her again Now that we're old and ready 
have to go We get to thinking of things from a long time ago We had a lot of kids, trouble and pain But then, oh Lord, we do it again Oh, kisses sweeter than wine Oh, kisses sweeter than wine Everybody, one more time. Oh, kisses sweeter than wine. Oh, kisses sweeter than wine. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen and Rod. Thank you so much. My name is Cece O'Brien, and this is Didier Ortiz. We're both from People's Opposition to War, Imperialism, and Racism. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who put this on, the Activist Advisory Committee, um, and the Universalist Unitarian Church, and everyone else who put it together. This is such a beautiful community event. I'm really proud of everybody. Go ahead. So people opposing war, imperialism, and racism. It's a group that's dedicated here in South Florida to stopping war, imperialism, and racism. So what have we done regarding it? <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. It's, it's always good to, you know, irradiate that. Um, we actually set up a march in uh, South Com down in El Doral to oppose Gitmo. And that is to support the closing down of Gitmo because we believe that it's a modern day gulag that's taking people out of their rights, taking people out of their homes, and taking people out of their own dignity. We're now setting up a campaign against drones, and we're working towards consolidating a, a more, I think, broad movement of progressives here in South Florida to act against these atrocities, which is joining people who are innocent. If you want to reach us, you can t uh, follow us on Twitter at Power South Florida. I mean, I'm sorry, Power S O F L A. That's P O W I R S O F L A. And our email is powersouthflorida at gmail.com. It's Power P O W I R, not Power P O W E R. Thank you. And I just want to introduce our next artist, who's Rob Koppelman. He's been performing music in South Florida since relocating here in 1996, and he actually knew Pete Seeger personally for many years. <laughs> Yay! Um, Pete contributed uh, the foreword to Rob's book, actually, which is available here today, on the writings of Lee Hayes, who collaborated with Pete Seeger to compose the Hammer Song and others they performed as members of the Weavers. So please welcome him to the stage. Well, I thought in honor of the occasion, I worked hard so I could sound the way Pete Seeger did the last 15 years. <laughs> but Pete could get away with it. He would sing the first line and everybody else knew the rest of the song. And of course, I was lucky enough to get a song that has no chorus. Well, it was back in 1942, I was a member of a good platoon. We were on maneuvers in Louisiana one night by the light of the moon. The captain told us to ford a river, that's how it all begun. We were knee deep in the big muddy, big fool said to push on. Said, are you sure this is the best way back to the base? Sergeant, come on, I forded this river just a mile above this place. Oh, it'll be a little soggy, just keep slogging, we'll soon be on dry ground. We were waist deep in the big muddy, big fool said to push on. Well, the sergeant said, with all this equipment, no man will be able to swim. Sergeant, don't be a nervous Nelly, the captain said to him. All it needs is a little determination, man, follow me, I'll 
it on. And we are neck deep in the big, muddy, and the big fool set to push on. Clouded over, we heard a gurgling cry. And a few seconds later, the captain's helmet was all that floated by. The sergeant said, Turn around, men, I'm in charge from now on. And we just made it out of the big muddy when the big captain dead and gone. He stripped and died and found his body stuck in the old quicksand. Well, I guess he didn't know that the water was deeper than the place he'd once before been. But another stream had joined the muddy half mile from where we'd gone. And we were lucky to escape from the big muddy when the big fool said to push on. Well, I'm not going to point any moral. I'll leave that for yourself. Maybe you're still walking, you're still talking, and you'd like to keep your health. But every time I see the news, damn old feelings come on. We're always deep in the big muddy, and the big fool says to push on. Always deep in the big muddy, the big fool says to push on. Waist deep in the big muddy, and the big says to push on. Waist deep, neck deep, soon even a tall man will be way over his head. We're all waist deep in the big muddy. Big fool says to push on. Our next performer is a favorite of mine. He's a great folk singer. Uh, very involved in Florida music, has appeared in uh, and headlined folk festivals all throughout the state of Florida. He's been singing uh, constantly since the 1880s, he says, um, without, even, without even a bathroom break. That's the amazing thing about this guy. At any rate, uh, he's involved in the, uh, and be will be doing a benefit for the Everglades. Benefits this coming Saturday, and how about a big hand for Grant Livingston? We don't have uh, six day, seven day work weeks anymore. We don't have child labor. Like we did a hundred years ago. About 70 something years ago, Pete Seeger sang a song called Talking Union. There's the notion that we don't need unions anymore. It's kind of related to stuff like the Voting Rights Act. The Endangered Species Act. It's the ridiculous notion that if something is working, we can get rid of it. Well, Pete was talking union then, and we're talking union now. If you want higher wages, let me tell you what to do. You gotta talk to the workers in the shop with you. you gotta build you a union, gotta make it strong. You all stick together now, it won't be long. You'll get shorter hours. Better working conditions. Vacations with pay. Take your kid to the seashore. It ain't quite that simple, so I better explain Just why you got to ride on the union train If you wait for the boss to raise your pay We'll all be waiting till Judgment Day We'll all be buried, gone to heaven St. Peter will be the straw boss then Well, you know you're underpaid, but the boss says you ain't He speeds up the work till you're about to faint You may be down and out, but you ain't beaten just pass out a leaflet, call a meeting, talk it over. Speak your mind, decide to do something about it. Of course, the boss may persuade some poor damn fool to go to your meetings and act like a stool. You can always tell the stool, though, that's a fact. He's got a yellow streak running down his back. He doesn't have to stool. He'll always get along at all what he takes out of blind men's cups. 
you got a union now and you're sitting pretty. Put some of the boys on the steering committee. The boss won't listen when one man squawks, but he's got to listen when the union talks. He better be mighty lonely. Everybody decide to walk out on him. Suppose they're working you so hard it's just outrageous and paying you all starvation wages. You go to the boss and the boss would yell, before I'd raise your pay I'd see you all in hell. He's smoking a big cigar and feeling mighty slick. He thinks he's got your union lick. But he looks out the window and what does he see but a thousand pickets and they all agree he's a bastard. Unfair! Slave driver, even his wife thinks so. Now, boys, you come to the hardest time. The boss will try to bust your picket line. He'll call the police, the National Guard, to tell you it's a crime to have a union guard. He'll raid your meat, bust you on the head, call every one of you a damn red, unpatriotic terrorists, even the kids. But up in Detroit, here's what they found. And out in Frisco, here's what they found. Down in Pittsburgh, here's what they found. And at the University of Miami, here's what they found. That if you don't let red bait break you up, and you don't let vigilantes break you up, and you don't let stool pigeons break you up, and you don't let the governor break you up, you'll win. What I mean. I think Marie mentioned the show we did a, a couple of months ago. Uh, uh, Joyce Brown put that together, and thank you, Joyce. It's great to see you here. And one of the highlights for me was uh, working with, uh, with a wonderful uh, singer and uh, musician named Tracy Sands. Come on here, Tracy. I want to tell you this song. You won't probably. It's uh, the Pete Bogue Soldiers, and um, coming from the north of Ireland and growing up in a war zone. I relate to this song. And um, what I know about Pete Seeger is that he was always talked about, he was always around. Um, I came from a family of folk singers called the Sands family, and he was around. So his name was mentioned, I knew about his work, and uh, we all were doing work, even 3,000 miles away in uh, the north of Ireland. So thank you for having me today. And this one is a beautiful song, and I'll leave it up to you then.
marching no more with her space to the bar. And then will the people, soldiers, march no more with her space to the bar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grant. How about a big hand for Ray Del Papa? Sacco and Vincetti resonates quite deeply, I know, with many of us. On a personal level, I remember my father, who never, never would go out alone and do anything on his own at night. One day in, in 1973, he went to see a movie in Miami Beach about Sacco and Vincetti. And this is from a man who, like I said, would never go out. My father was in his early 20s when Sacco and Vincetti were executed. And uh, he participated in protest in this town in, in upstate New York called Geneva and Little Italy in, in Geneva, New York. So. Like I said, Sacco and Vincenti really has a lot of meaning for a lot of us. As far as Pete Seeger goes, after World War II, he was sitting around talking with Woody one day and they were discussing whether or not the letters that Sacco and Vincenti had wrote while they were in prison might be able to put to music. So Woody volunteered to go up to Boston to research the letters and he came back with a few, and the one they chose was Sacco's last letter to his son on the night he was executed. And this is such a powerful song when you think of a man who's about to be murdered by the state. And what would he say to his son? A loving letter, a letter of hope, and a letter that would keep the spirit of what Sacco and Vincetti stood for. Sacco's letter to his son. If nothing happens, they will electrocute us right after midnight. Therefore, here I am, with you, with love and open heart, as I was yesterday. Don't cry, Dante, for many, many tears have been wasted as your mother's tears have already been wasted for seven years and not did any good. So, son, instead of crying, be strong, be brave, so to be able to comfort your mother. And when you want to distract her from the discouraging soulness, take her for a long white walk in the quiet countryside gathering flowers here and there, and resting under the shade of the trees beside the music of the waters. The peacefulness of nature, she will enjoy it very much. And so, and you will surely too. But son, you must remember, don't use all your stealth, but down yourself one step to help with the weaker ones at your side. The weaker ones that cry for help, the persecuted and the victims, they are your friends, the friends of yours and mine. They are the comrades that fight. Just as your father, your father and Bartolo have fallen, have fought and fell yesterday for the conquest of joy, of freedom for all. In the struggle of life, you will find you will find more love, and in the struggle, you will be loved also. No moss, no more, we must stop the dirty wars. Compensinos, compensaceras, we cry out, no mas, no more. Every November in the weekend before Thanksgiving, 
Thousands of people make the pilgrimage to Columbus, Georgia to participate in the School of the Americas Watch Vigil in front of the gates of Fort Benning, the home of the School of, Ameri of the Americas, currently known as the Western Hemisphere Institute for Security and Cooperation. The School of the Americas, since its inception, has graduated some of the worst human rights abusers in Latin America, including this gentleman, Pedro Nunoz. Pedro Nunoz was a lieutenant in the Chilean army that participated in the coup d'etat against Salvador Allende. He's the man that ordered the torture of Victor Jara, the folk singer, the Chilean folk singer. He is also the man that put a bullet in his head and killed him. The school has been open for over 50 years now and is still training Latin American military personnel. For 20 years, members of the School of the Americas Watch has been trying to shut the school down. We've done it in two ways, in front of Congress with bills to shut, cut off funding, and a new tactic where we're going directly to the countries in Latin America and asking them to withdraw their troops. To this date, we have six countries that no longer send their troops to the school. We have a table back there with a lot of information, including a very important letter recently written by Danny Glover, Oliver Stone, and Father Roy Bourgeois, who is the director, on what's happening in Venezuela. For those of you who don't know, the Raging Grannies are a longtime street activist group and have participated in everything down here from the GMO campaign to Stop the war in Iraq. If there is any song that, divide, that, that defines not just Pete Seeger, but nonviolent civil disobedience, this song does. It's probably the most important protest song written in the history of this country. Thank you. The Raging Granny. <laughs> shall all be free. Ready? Yeah. 
We are not alone. I'm Susan Moss, and I'm coordinator of the Labyrinth Cafe Concert Series, which takes place in this very room on the second Saturday of every month, September through May. We are currently in our 11th year of operation, showcasing live original music. Thank you. Emphasis on live original music. We love it. And the next artist is no exception. And Annie Wins truly is an artist on so many levels. She paints mailboxes, she throws pottery, plants gardens, builds stone fire pits and furniture, she kayaks, she delivers babies, she runs in 100 mile relay races, rides a Harley Davidson, bungee jumps, and plays many types of flutes, a variety of percussion instruments, piano and guitar, sharing her music in venues and festivals with audiences as far away as New Zealand, Bali, Thailand, Sweden, Mexico, Australia, and Costa Rica. Her brand new instrumental CD, Rain on Bare Skin, which is described as multicultural, mellow, and meditative, is hot off the presses, and it's here for sale today. Please help me welcome one of the shiniest and the sassiest people on the planet, Annie Wins. So who's got a really low voice? Raise your hand. OK, your part goes, hey, hump, oh, we my web, oh, we my web. Oh, we go web. Can you do that? Hey, up. Oh, we go web. Oh, we go web. Oh, we go web. Keep going. Hey, up. Oh, we go web. Oh, we go web. Other guys are gonna go. Oh, we go web. 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 With harmonies. Can I hear you? Keep it going, pick your part. Oh, <laughs> 
The National Committee for a Sane Nuclear Policy was founded in 1957 in response to the frenetic nuclear arms race, with SANE referring to Eric Fromm's SANE Society. In its subse subsequent incarnations through SANE, SANE Freeze, and ultimately Peace Action, it's played a historic role in promoting peace via popular legislative educational, and direct action. Peace Action is the largest grassroots peace group in the nation with uh, chapters and affiliates in 30 states. Its sister education fund works to achieve the abolition of nuclear weapons, promotes government, government spending priorities that support human needs, and a foreign policy that respects human rights. Pete and Toshi Seeger were longtime members and supporters of Peace Action, and Pete served on its National Advisory Council. There are two Peace Action affiliates here in South Florida. One is War Versus Human Needs, which grew out of Rethink Afghanistan, a group which in 2009 and 10 uh, showed the film by that name with a speaker uh, to 28 groups. Uh, which helped to delegitimize de the sordid conflict in Afghanistan, which we're finally getting out of. We're now launching a similar program <laughs> on drones and hope to work with power, perhaps, on their program. For information on having a free program with a speaker on drones, contact Ed Wujak, who's contact information is in your, uh, your handout tonight, uh, or um, the other friends at the table, uh, Carol Lewis, Marie Spike, and Raphael Tuberon, and also sign our petition supporting the continued use of diplomacy regarding Iranian nuclear weapons capability instead of provocation that can lead to additional conflict in the Middle East. The other Peace Action affiliate here is Occupy Fort Lauderdale Labor Outreach Group, which has been particularly active supporting the minimum wage contract workers at Fort Lauderdale Airport in their struggle for dignity, decent wages and working conditions, and unionization, alluding to the peace. and also addressing the Broward Wage Recovery Ordinance, which we helped to pass. A final word from Pete was, it's better to have struggled for justice than lost than never to have struggled at all. Uh, my next pleasured opportunity is to introduce Rod McDonald. With credit, uh, to Lee Zimmerman from New Times as the introduction. Uh, a veteran of the Greenwich Village folk scene, Rod is happily ensconced in Del Rey and still manages to eke out a pretty good living with frequent touring and an ongoing series of master classes at FAU where he lectures on songwriting and technique. Their songs are devoted to social and political commentary. His American Jerusalem piece presaged the current renewed national attention to income inequality. Right. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. 
A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to laugh, a time to weep. To everything, to everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to build up, a time to break down, a time to dance, a time to mourn, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. A time for war, a time for peace, a time for love, a time for hate. A time you may embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. Sing it for me one time. A time to gain, a time to lose, a time to rent, a time to sow, a time for love, a time for hate, a time for peace. I swear it's not too late. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season. Turn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven, and a time to every purpose under heaven. Thank you very much. Rod McDonald. We try to, to follow every tall act with a short act. Uh, her son, Brett, is a sound technician and runs a sound studio. Her son, Todd, is a videographer that's now working with Sony, right? And her daughter, Margot, makes incredible sculptures. But Todd and Brett and Ellen make um, videos for charity and they've raised over a hundred million dollars for organizations such as the Jewish Federation, Camillus House, Easter Seals, and Shalom Bayit Domestic Violence. So she's well involved in the community. How about a big hand for Ellen Buxtell? I realized that Pete was uh, someone who made lots of songs famous. He, he hooked up with other musicians. And what happened, what I found was that Pete had had a very special relationship with Bob Dylan. And when he was 91 years old, he recorded Forever Young with his Rivertown children's um, project that he had where he would... Um, uh, he would work with children uh, starting at nine years old to basically uh, teach them to sing and write songs and to try to help change the world. There was a young woman, on, a young girl on the, on the video that I watched that said, you are never too old to change the world. So here we are. 
So I found this song, and it's a wonderful message. May God's blessings keep you always. May your wishes all come true. May you always do for others and let others do for you. May you build a ladder to the stars and climb on every rung and may you stay. Forever young. Join us. Forever young. Forever young. May you So much, Rod and Lori. All right, I'm Reverend Gail Tapscott. I'm the minister at the Unitarian Universalist Church, which is where you are. And it never seems to get in any of the biographical information, no matter who I tell it to or who. Pete Seeger and Toshi Seeger were Unitarian Universalist. 
Their social activism was influenced by that and vice versa. My big focus has been on economic justice because I feel like inequality, even before things got as bad as they were, has always really upset me and I was able to get a lot of other people here to get upset about it. So we have always worked with LifeNet for Families, the Cooperative Feeding Program, we have worked for a while with a group that was housing uh, homeless families, and now I continue to work very actively with the Broward Coalition for the Homeless and Food Not Bombs and other groups, and I've just gotten recruited some new people to go down with me and harass our Fort Lauderdale City Commissioners on Tuesday night. Anybody else is welcome to join us. The more letters you write to Jack Seiler and others and tell them to stop criminalizing the homeless, the better things would be because nobody chooses to be homeless and nobody chooses to make $7.25 an hour. Okay, so we have a lot of work to do, but a few states and cities are doing the right thing or better things at any rate. Um, we also have worked for something called wage theft. Bob mentioned it as part of the labor outreach, uh, something that I was doing here with the church and support through the Interfaith Worker Justice Group which has a South Florida division, and we, done, we have created ordinances in Broward County, Dade County, and several other counties are working on it. And for the fourth year in a row, we stopped the retail manufacturers of Florida from preempting those local ordinances. Let's hear it for that. We are also involved with a group called Bold Justice, which stands for Broward Organized Leaders Doing Justice and they are working on uh, and just got a resolution passed for a local hiring ordinance so that people will be asked to hire people locally before they bring in people from the outside. Let's hear it for that. Okay, we lose, sometimes we lose and lose badly, but we've also succeeded through the Bold Justice Group in getting uh, the Broward and Hollywood Police and Sheriff's Office, not always my favorite people, but they have agreed to issue civil citations only for underage offenders to try to keep them out of the criminal justice system. So, some good things are happening. We're still working through bold justice on literacy. Now, we don't just do social justice, we also have fun. Susan mentioned the concerts, eight a year, one includes a sing-along. We also have a thing coming up called UU Wisdom and Enlightenment that's all about being happy. We'll have happy foods, happy music, and I first saw Rod McDonald in the Unitarian Church in Arlington, Massachusetts. I'm sure he doesn't remember it, but he sang a song called The Aliens Came in Business Suits. And <laughs> Always one of my favorites. And it is now my great pleasure to introduce the Reverend Amy Carol Webb, beloved local song weaver, my colleague in Unitarian Universalist Ministry, who also, I think, discovered that she could be a minister through the Unitarian Universalist at something called SUSI. SUSI stands for Southeast Unitarian Universalist Summer Institute. Say it with me, Southeast Unitarian Universalist Summer Institute. It's, yes, it's the third week of July every year for the past, I don't know, 40 something? I've been going for 16 years. First went as a concert performer and then went, oh. Remembered what I wanted to be when I was a little girl. I wanted to be a musician and a minister, but where I was raised, they said, no, you can't do that. So I became a min uh, musician. And then discovering Unitarian Universalism, the little girl inside stood up and said, hey, you can still be what you want to be when you grow up. So imagine my delight. All my life thinking that Eve got a raw deal. And then discovering this gem from Pete Seeger in, written in 1967 and rarely recorded. I think he only recorded it one time. Wherein he presents Eve as a feminist. This is called Letter to Eve.
Hey Eve, where is Adam? Now you're kicked out of the garden. Hey Eve, where is Adam? Now you're kicked out of the garden. You've been traveling shore to shore. Now you find that there is no more. Shalom, pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam, hewa. Don't you wish love and love alone could save the world from disaster? Don't you wish love and love alone could save this world from disaster? If only love could stop the confusion, or is it just one more illusion? Shalom. Pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam, hewa, that's your part. But if you want to have great love, you got to have great anger. If you want to have great love, you better have great anger. Cause when we see innocent folks shut down Should we just shake our heads and frown Shalom, pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam, hewa But if you want to hit the target square It better not be blind anger If you want to hit the target square it better not be blind anger Or else it becomes just one more time The correction becomes a crime Shalom, pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam, hewa Hey e you tell Adam next time he asks you. Hey Eve, you tell Adam next time he asks you. Oh, when he says, oh baby, it's cold outside. What's the password to come inside? You say, Shalom. Pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam hewa. Now, Eve, you find Adam. It's time to build a new garden. Now, Eve, go find Adam. It's time to build a new garden. We got to get to work and on the building of a decent home for all God's children. Shalom, pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam mehwa. Shalom, pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam mehwa. Shalom, pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam lewa. Four thousand languages in this world. It's the same for every boy and girl. Shalom, pacham in terrace, mir shanti, salam lewa. Rod McDonald.
Shalom Mir Shanti Salam Mehwa Shalom Pacham in Terrace Mir Shanti Salam Mehwa Four thousand languages in this world It's the same to every boy and girl Shalom Pacham in Terrace Mir Shanti Salam Flowers gone, long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the flowers gone? Young girls pick them, everyone. Oh, when will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Where have all the young girls gone? Long time passing. Where have all the young girls gone? Soldiers, everyone, when will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Hey, Amy, where are you? Where have all the soldiers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the soldiers gone? Flowers gone long time ago. Where have all the flowers gone? Young girls pick them, everyone. When will they ever learn? When will they ever Thank you.
You're not young. Am I on? If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, all over this land, I'd hammer out danger. Brothers and my sisters all over this land. I'd sing it in the morning, I'd sing it in the evening, all over this land. Hey, everybody, sing one more with us. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream Water. This land was made for you and me. As I was walking and ripping up my way, I saw above me that in the skyway, I saw below me that golden valley. This land was made for you and me. This land is yours. This land is my land, from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. Nobody.
walk in, I saw a sign there, and that sign it said, that sign it said, no trespassing. But on the other side, on the other side, that sign said nothing. That sign was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. I roamed and rambled, and I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of the diamond deserts. And all around me, a voice was telling me, this land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. The sun was shining, and I was strolling, and the wheat was waving, and the dust was rolling. And above everything, a voice was sounding. This land was made for you and me. This land is my land From California to New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Elm Street Waters This land was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land From California so much everybody and remember think globally act locally thank you so much